Hello, this is my vlog from Dubai. Looks surprisingly like my house a little bit. If you don't know anything about Dubai, uh, it's a very strange place. Probably one of the biggest misconceptions about Dubai is that there is no alcohol, which is a lie. Because everyone's like, hey, it's cool, you're not drinking. You can go there and it's like, no, seriously. As long as you're in a hotel, and I think if you have a license in your house, you can drink alcohol. So what it means is all the expats basically go to hotels and then get really, really smashed which is what all my friends did. We went to like a brunch thing, which was lovely. It was basically all you can eat. Uh, this hotel opens up all of his restaurants. It's like an all you can eat buffet. It's the Dubai equivalent of like a Toby Carvery, basically, but everything's like Michelin star food and like inexhaustible Moe champagne. So yeah, that was kind of tough. Free champagne. I had like the kids wristband on that they don't serve alcohol to. <laughs> Anyway, they give out like watermelons that are just full of vodka. I was crying, man. It was really hard. Everyone was just getting completely smashed. There was more cheese there than pretty much a, like, a drunk Frenchman's fridge. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. More cheeses than I've ever seen. And I like cheese. Uh, other things that happened in Dubai, I found some fish that clearly look like they belonged in a Ghibli film. <laughs> I also realised that sometimes in life to, you know, really truly achieve your goals, you have to basically crawl on a really sweaty, sticky floor. Slowly. No. <laughs> I mean, I know it was like a laser maze. But I think it kind of rings true with most other things in life, surely. Has anyone else worked in the the day-to-day -day working world? There's a little bit a little bit of crawling on your stomach sometimes. It's kind of a little bit depressing. Less lasers, though, obviously, than the working world, which I think is a missed opportunity and a shame. So some of you may or may not know uh, that I am absolutely petrified of heights. Let's put it mildly. But I do sort of work on the sensibility that I think it's really important in life to do what absolutely terrifies you. I mean, within reason, not doing anything too silly. So, uh, as I'm here in Dubai, uh, we're going to go up the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. Uh, when we actually arrived, I looked at it. You know when you're like, uh, that beginning in space balls where the ship goes by, and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. I was basically looking at my head, and uh, basically my head had to go all the way back to see this thing. I mean, this thing is seriously tall. I'm actually quite happy to do links right now because I can focus on this rather than the absolute terror I will feel going up in a lift, uh, 100, 124, something like that. It's gonna be a bit scary. I'm actually okay, I'm okay. I'm all right, I'm okay now. when you don't like heights, have to suffer the really, really slow walk to the edge because I don't want to go anywhere near it. I know I'm in a glass room, it doesn't really matter. I just, it's gonna take me, yeah, yeah, a little while to kind of get anywhere near. It's not really about like safety, it's just fear. Oh god. That actually makes my stomach turn. Um, as you can see, I have vastly improved. I'm now sitting by the outside window. Although it does help, stupid little things, right? Because there's that bit there. 
it's helpful. I would say this bit here. It's the weird thing. It's actually, I think it's more. I think it's more the actual idea in my head that uh, my legs are going to give way and standing next to kind of sheer glass makes you feel a little bit wibbly. Um, but I've got right to the edge, which is good. It's all about pushing through, even though you're really scared. This is quite pleasant. No, just hanging. So yes, went up the Burj Khalifa and one of the things, like when I first got up there, didn't want to go anywhere near the window, really. I had to like hold on to the edge where the thing was, don't like it, sweaty palms, the whole works. And I was like, right, by the end of me being up here, the time that I'm up here, I want to be able to just walk straight up and just look right out the window and not feel weird. And you can do that in a really short space of time. You can train yourself to do that. You basically need to have in your head when you're afraid of something, there's like this loop of like negative thoughts. Like you're saying somewhere in your head, you're thinking at the very, very back in your subconscious, you're thinking, oh, you know, you're afraid you think you're going to fall. Or my thing is that my legs go really weak. And I think that's what freaks me out because I feel really unsteady, even though there's a window there. It doesn't make any difference, I kind of feel unsteady. So I would say a mantra to myself, like, you know, your your legs are strong, you're completely safe, you're totally fine. And I would just say that over and over to myself, like in my head. And the more you convince yourself, because it's the same, it's the same thing that your head says to yourself, like in your subconscious, just these stupid little phrases that repeat over and over and over again and make you afraid or make you think of things in a weird way. And what you have to do is just take over that bit and just say, no, I don't want to say this, I want to say this to myself and you just keep saying it and keep saying it and keep saying it like my legs are strong my legs are steady you know I'm, I'm absolutely fine and by the end of it I was doing this you know just walking right up to the window didn't feel weird didn't my palms didn't sweat anything like that um I was quite pleased with myself about that you know I think it's really important to uh, move towards things that you are afraid of so anyway you're going to get awesome people's life isn't about finding yourself life is about creating yourself and I've always really really thought that so anything that I'm kind of a bit afraid of or something I want to get really, you know, get good at, I make sure I do it. It's the only way you can do it. You're never just going to discover the true you and blah, blah, blah. You've got to be like, right, I want to be like this. And I'm going to make myself like that. Well, that's the hardy way of doing it anyway. I don't know if it quite works the same for everyone. You might remember from my last vlog, I was talking about, I was going to show you a picture that I wasn't going to put online. I'm not going to post it up because it's quite bad. It's not like weird or sexual or anything like that. I thought it'd be really lovely as I was in Dubai, there was the chance to basically go swimming with dolphins. I love dolphins, I've always wanted to do it. Always kind of weirdly put off by the idea of doing it when they're in captivity, but I thought, you know what? Like, it's not often I get the chance. Um, I'd quite like to do it. And whilst most people kind of go there and have this jolly, jolly time with the dolphin, hugging it and dancing with it and riding on its back, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. I thought it was one of the worst things ever. And you sort of, you get in the water and I always thought swimming with dolphins would be a magical experience because they're like the you know, smartest creature next to us. Although I would contest that some are probably smarter than some humans. And I just hated it. There was, there was nothing of any personality or any part of any dolphin that I saw there, if that makes sense. It was all very regimented. It was very Americanized. Not that's necessarily a bad thing, but it's just like, oh my God, the dolphin wants to come and give you a hug. Put out your arms, give him a hug. Like that kind of thing. And you're like, oh dear God. But they were kind of saying that, but it's like, stay in line, look forward, go over there, tread the water there, put your hands here. Now, don't look the dolphin in the eye. Don't look the dolphin in the eye. Don't look the dolphin in the eye. And you're like, oh, what the hell is this dolphin going to do? I've always been told they're friendly creatures. Why is it going to bite my face off? What the hell is going on? And it just, um, <laughs> it's just really horrendous really horrendous, felt really awkward. It's this sort of thing of, look, if a dolphin wants to come give me a hug, that is awesome. I would love it to do that, but it doesn't want to. You're kind of making it do that. And it's really forced and really contrived. There was no moment where it was badly behaved or did anything it really wanted to do. It just did what it was told. And that whole experience just, it was rubbish. So this is what happened. And this is what I look like excuse the lack of makeup, I look horrendous anyway, uh, when the dolphin came to kiss me on the side of the face, this is pretty much my face for the entire really expensive experience. <laughs> Get off me, dolphin! Yeah, I, I just literally, uh, I just literally absolutely hated it. It was awful. Don't recommend it unless you're a very small child. And uh, you know what it is? If it had been like a dog or a monkey, I wouldn't have minded so much, but you know these animals are really, really smart and you've just taken away any 
I don't know, they're, they're like dead inside a little bit. There's like nothing there. Well, that was a bit of a downer, wasn't it? Yeah, bit of a downer there with the dolphins. Uh, next week's vlog will be from the London Pet Show, which started off as a joke and became into this magical day of rabbit show jumping and finding dogs that look like each one of us. So you can look, for, look forward to that next week. It got a little bit offensive. Sorry, Kirsty. We said she was a Rottweiler. <laughs>